this is still all part of who you are and this information is always valuable. Even, you know, if it's someplace a lot of people don't want to go, people always talk about places they don't want to go. Have you ever heard about open focus? About what? Open focus. Yes. Open this has to do open focus, yeah. It has to do with you can't be inspired when you're absolutely focused on one point. Yeah. And you know this, you hammer away at a, at a problem mm -hmm. and you just don't get any ideas. And the minute you get up from your chair and take a walk or the minute you go do something else or you're cleaning the floor, washing dishes, bingo! It hits you, yes. All right. Your masculine energy wants to focus and do. Mm -hmm. That's your destroyer energy, really. Uh, That's not the creative energy. Okay. That is the destroyer energy. You've now decided what you want and you're eliminating or shaping to bring up what you're keeping. Mm -hmm. The feminine energy is the creative energy because that's the one that goes open focus. It throws all of it out. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now we got room for new things to come in. So you need both. Right. You need that masculine that focuses on the job and builds. You need that feminine that throws all that building right. away and says, so the women are naturals at seeing the bigger picture. Men are taught not to be. I believe that men and women you think we're taught, can so you're do taught this. To be, or? They can each use those energies. Mm -hmm. But because half of them are belittled, even the men are suppressing them, and the women are taught not to use them too because it just doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. Um, so there's the thing. You need that dynamic. It's a dynamic. The working back and forth between the left Right, and when we up. have that moving in the world, we'll be able to pull back and see the bigger picture, then focus on and pull back and focus on, and we won't see one problem, and we won't see one solution. We'll see many solutions. But when we drive the focus too narrow and say, this must be linear and progress to that, we never step back and we never turn out the lights and have the dark where out of the dark can come anything. Mm -hmm. If you see what I'm trying to get at. I understand what you're talking you, about. You over illuminate it, you see too much, and you can't see anything between the cracks. The two things have to be in dynamic And balance. play against each other. There's a dynamicism between the two. And sometimes you're all the way in one and all the way in the other, but if you never swing back and forth, you don't get that in them. Right. Okay. Well, I don't think anybody would want to be stuck on one tick or one talk of the pendulum. I think that'd be a very big, that'll be very destructive and very unnerving and not a very comfortable position to be in. Although many people can survive can survive in that. It's not where I would want to be. Yeah. If you look at it from a strictly TikTok world, it's either or. When you look at it from an open ended well, it's just a more just more world. creative feminine energy, it's an all world. And in the all world what you need comes forward when you need it, and then it steps back. So it's where differences work in synergy as opposed to against each other, and we do get stuck on the differences are either or. Yeah. That polarization is going to kill us every time. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I take it you have traveled rather extensively. I don't know that you have. Where have you gone? In the world that you find to be beautiful, that you bring that you bring into your art, um, some of these landscapes that you're painting, do they come from other locations other than just here? Where have you gone that you found special? That's been inspiration. Every place has its own place, okay. and you can take what's well, beautiful or what is not. You know, you, uh, let's start with where I went in the world. Right, that's all. When I got done college, or was working in college, when I made that crucial decision, I'm going to write and paint because I can do all of it mm -hmm. in that arena, I realized very fast I did not have enough life experience to do any of it. So every cent that I earned that I didn't need to spend for books and use for my school year expenses, I'd take half the, half the summer and work like crazy, and then I would travel somewhere. And then I come back to school and get a job and earn my school expenses as I went. Right. So very quickly, right off the bat, I went to see a total eclipse of the sun in the middle of the ocean and then saw Mauritania, Senegal, Africa. I went to Russia because I didn't want to take the newspaper's idea of what the Iron Curtain was. Mm -hmm. um, Nixon had just opened it up. I was one of the first tour groups. You know, I went to see the paintings too, phenomenal paintings in Russia. But I went with a bunch of artists. 
with a Russian speaker. So I went to Russia. I had an opportunity to go to Korea. A friend of mine was animating over there, and he had a Korean wife and wanted her able to speak English. And he wanted to be able to talk to somebody who came from his background, and he said, sometimes it's too crazy. Yes. So he was working as an animator in exile over there, and he just said, I'm, I'm making all this money. What I need is to be able to talk to somebody. Here's a plane ticket. Mm -hmm. So I went to Korea with his wife and toured all over Korea. Um, and that just broadened my scope. So some of the things that were wilderness trips, I did Outward Bound at 17 years old and was up in the backcountry in, um, in Minnesota, crossed into Canada and canoed, um, did backpacking trips, did wilderness camping, and, you know, all through my childhood too, a lot of get, going to the wilderness. But what did it do for me? Did it only give me landscapes for my books? No, it gave me oh, concepts. No. It gave me a working grasp of who I really am. You know, people say, let's make laws and let's have everybody have equal opportunity and let's have everybody have, well, you know, when you start making generalizations like that, it gets pretty frightening because it takes away the unanticipated choice. And I had the fortune to see Russia when it was under a communist regime. Mm -hmm. And it's the only time I've ever gotten on an airplane and the entire plane spontaneously cheered when it left the ground. For several reasons. That's, One is you were always here. watched, yeah. but it was more than that. Because when the state decided who was artist and who was not, when there was no competition for products in the stores, mm -hmm. you'd go into the supermarket and two companies printed the can labels. It was numbing. It was deadening. The colors were dull. Life was dull. The choices were dull. It was absolutely like being on anesthetic. It's suppression. It's, it's suppression. Yeah. And when I came back here, the loudness of our culture, you may not like all the choices we have. <laughs> you may think we're god awful consumers. You may think that there's, you walk into a store and there's too much advertising or too much hyperbole going on, mm -hmm. but let me tell you, it's alive. It is alive, and you can choose to take it or not. But if you had seen the alternative, it would make you weep, because it takes away that full range of choice, and the full range of choice can be incredibly beautiful and incredibly ugly. Well, but as you expand choices, you're expanding all of it, and you can't have just this slice. Right because you're eliminating the vibrancy. And I hope that as human beings we can learn that, that by eliminating isn't how you heal something. It's by accepting the vibrancy that all of it can be there. And then refining your ability to make your choice.